Raise your hand if you've ever been bullied. Statistically, that should be at least a third of you. It's clearly more in this room. That means that at least a third of you remember eating lunch alone at your own table. At least a third of you remember spending recess in the lunchroom. At least a third of you remember getting picked last for teams in gym class or being the leftover student when it came to group projects. I'm sure at least a third of us can now vividly remember our experiences with childhood bullying. Now raise your hand if you're bummed you're gonna listen to 12 minutes of something sad. Well, don't worry. This talk isn't going to be sad in the slightest because today I'm going to be talking to you about why being mentally and emotionally bullied can be a good thing. You're probably thinking, what? How can power-hungry school kids and mean words and depression and low self-esteem and all that stuff be a good thing? But you see, the theme of today's talks is breaking through. And I've had a lot of breakthroughs in my life, in my studies, and in my company. But I can honestly say that I don't think any of them would have happened had I not been bullied. Most of us have been bullied at some point in our lives. Maybe it was in grade school, maybe it was in high school. Some of us had a mean comment directed toward us a couple times. Others of us have been battered for years by the words of bullies. We all have one thing in common. The comments and actions of those bullies impacted us negatively. Some of us fell into a depression. Some of us stayed away from social situations. Others of us resorted to self-harm. But the thing that we don't all have in common yet is the breakthrough. That's the overcoming of the feelings that were instilled in you by those bullies. That's the ability to make light of what was said or done to you. And that ability can be held by all of us. <clears throat> so here's what I'm not going to tell you today. I'm not going to tell you that you should be a bully. You should never, ever, ever be a bully to someone else. I'm not going to tell you that depression and self-harm should be embraced or glorified or romanticized. But I'm also not going to tell you that being bullied is all bad. One thing I've learned is that mean people don't go away. Sure, most people grow up and realize that being kind and compassionate is the easiest way to get what you want out of life. But there are plenty of people who haven't figured that out yet. And I've learned that over and over again. Even adult bullying does exist. What does adult bullying look like? Well, maybe the coworkers that you think are your friends leave for lunch on Fridays without even inviting you. Maybe the people you called friends in college have a group text dedicated to gossiping about you. Either way, what I've learned is that I can't control people, I can't control how they treat other people, and I can't control what circumstances they're dealing with that cause them to project their hurt onto others. What I can control is how I react. And that's the first benefit of being bullied that I'm thankful for. Dealing with verbal and emotional abuse when I was younger taught me that I have a couple options. I can either ignore hurtful words and try to shrug them off, which most of us know is not always possible, or I can use positive thoughts to affirm what I know about myself and my situation. This method of dealing with things is always possible, but it's something that has to be learned and practiced. Our first response to hurtful words is to believe them and take them to heart. Therefore, we have to practice counteracting that negative self-talk. And it just so happened that being bullied when I was younger fast-tracked that learning and provided a strong foundation for how I'm able to talk to myself today. The first time I learned this lesson was in seventh grade. There was a group of girls that were bullying my friend and I about our bodies, and their favorite thing to call us was whale. 
This was around the same time that the Save the Whales campaign was going on in the media. And one weekend, we just got so fed up with these girls that we went home and we had a sleepover and we made shirts and flyers that said, Save the Whales on them. <laughs> we got to school super early the following Monday and we plastered every single locker in the seventh grade hallway with our flyers and we wore our shirts the whole day to our classes. Towards the end of the day, of course, these girls came up to bully us and they asked us, why do your shirts say, save the waffles? <laughs> Not quite. That's when I learned that these girls probably are not geniuses, and <laughs> there was no real reason that I should be listening to anything they said to me. So this is when I learned how to stand up for myself, and this is when I learned the first benefit of being bullied, how to be resilient in less than desirable situations. Experiencing adverse situations through being bullied also helped me to be able to relate to people. Not only can I understand what people are going through on a surface level, but I've felt many of the same emotions that other people might have felt, and I'm able to bond with people better over those emotions. I can hear people's stories and say, I get it, I know what you're feeling, and here's what you can do about it. Because empathy isn't just relating to people over specific circumstances, like a breakup or a funeral. Empathy is gaining the ability to relate to almost anyone over almost anything. And I think that's a very important quality to have, and I would venture to say that it's a skill that can be learned very effectively by being bullied. <clears throat> being bullied also taught me what was different and intimidating about me. Bullies bully out of intimidation. They have to be mean to overcome their insecurities about something that you have that they don't. Elementary school, middle school, and high school are these horribly awkward times for everyone because everyone's trying to figure out who they are, but also trying to fit in with everyone else at the same time. But that fails miserably, because how can you fit in with people who don't know who they are either? But instead of bonding with our peers over our insecurities and growing up together, some people take out their frustrations and fears in the form of harsh words to other people. Bullies believe in a zero-sum game where the thought of everyone being happy and confident and thriving at the same time is completely impossible. Bullies believe that if you're doing well, it must mean that they can't be doing as well. So they have to push you down to make themselves go higher, feel happier, and do better. Bullies also bully people that are different. I've been the chubbier kid since kindergarten, but I didn't know it was a problem until a girl told me in second grade. And then I grew up thinking that being fat was this horrible thing because it meant no one wanted to play with me on the playground. I was also smarter than I was supposed to be in the eyes of my peers, and I was bullied for being smart even more than I was bullied for being fat. I was always the nerd, the geek, the bookworm, the teacher's pet, but it was way easier to deflect those words because I knew that there were logically, like logical arguments for why being fat might be bad, but there was no reason that being extra smart was a bad thing. That's when I started to realize that my bullies were doing me a sort of favor. It was just in a really painful and inconvenient way. My bullies were telling me what made me stand out. And though we don't value standing out when we're young, we all know the value of standing out now that we're older. That's why we join 80 different clubs in high school for our college applications. That's why we kill ourselves doing all these interesting things in college to pad our resumes for the workforce. We do it to stand out. 
And so many people go a really long time not knowing what makes them unique. That's why I feel grateful that I was bullied. My bullies told me that what made me unique was that I was fat and I was smart. And once I realized those things, I was able to turn them into positive things. I used those gosh darn brains to get a full academic scholarship to this amazing university. And I used my fat to understand the struggles that plus size women go through when they're looking for great clothes. And with that knowledge, I've been able to build a company during high school and college that simply started back in high school when I couldn't find cool clothes for my size and my age. So I learned how to make them. And then friends and family wanted me to make some for them. And the business quickly blossomed because I realized that I'm by far not the only person that struggles with confidence, self-esteem, and self-image. Now, through my company, the message and the impact I'm able to leave on the world is that clothing is a source of empowerment. I get to work with all types of people in a process where we learn and grow together while I design and make them great clothes. I make clothing that helps people walk into a room feeling like they own the place because I know what it feels like to walk into a room and feel invisible. So I never, I kept my promises. I, I never told you that being, that bullying is good. You should never, ever, ever be a bully. But chances are you've been bullied in the past and you probably will be in the future. You might have to deal with, you know, depression, anxiety, insecurity, and all those things and I understand all of them. But I, I hope you understand now that being bullied can be good and beneficial. And it has three very important silver linings. Being bullied was absolutely not the most efficient way to teach me resilience and empathy and what made me unique. But it sure was effective. And it can be for you too. Thank you.